The speed of light and vacuum is one of the fundamental constants of the universe. I am Aaron Picus, and this is my lab where I study light's properties. Observing light is not as easy as it seems. We see light focused by a lens, but we cannot observe the rays inside the lens. We cannot see the light waves itself, and of course we cannot go anywhere near a black hole. But we can model the behavior of light using another wave which shares the same key property. It has no dispersion, which means its speed does not depend on the wavelength. In a shallow wave, the amplitude of the wave is close to the depth of the water. The speed of such wave is determined by the density of the water and the depth. It does not depend on the frequency of the wave. To experiment with shallow water waves, we need to build a large shallow aquarium. To generate the wave, we need an emitter which moves up and down or back and forth and creates the wave. The emitter is driven by a variable frequency, pulse generators. In 1980, Professor William Unruh of the University of British Columbia discovered that very similar equations describe the light near a black hole and water waves in rapidly flowing water, in particular a water near rainfall or water flowing over the edge. The subject attracted other physicists to continue the research. In a nutshell, the idea is that if the water flows away faster than the wave can travel, the wave is carried with the flow and cannot escape. Notice how the wavelength is shorter near the black hole. Light falling into a black hole also has a shorter wavelength, which is known as blue shift. The shallow water waves experiment allowed us to simulate many properties of light and observe optical effects. We saw the basics of geometrical optics, the wave optic effects, and we even get to travel to the event horizon of a black hole.